In this video, I'm making a buoy inspired by the Browning B25 trap shotgun. So I'm stacking my steel and I'm going to enclose this so that there's no oxygen involved in the uh, forge welding process with all these little pieces being forged welded together. It makes a really clean weld. Forge it up, got the belt welded up, and we got some heat. I press real gentle on my first welds on a tall belt like this. I make sure that my core is heated up really good. So I just do mild presses. I'm removing some of the uh, sheet metal I had welded to the outside of the billet and exposing uh, the high carbon steel and getting rid of the mild steel now. I got a really good forge weld on it. I'm gonna draw the bars out. Start to make my W's for my mosaic. That's still the same bar, I haven't cut it yet. And I got my billet cut up and I'm getting ready to stack it to start forming more of that same pattern that I'm looking for. There's no air in that uh, forge weld. It has no atmosphere exposure. It's all done without any oxygen. So it makes a really super clean weld for the Damascus. Same thing here again. I uh, get it really good and hot and soak that core because you can get cold shuts in the center, uh, sometimes using these big billets. And after you do that once or twice, you pretty much won't do it anymore. And I'm re-squaring, trying to mani manipulate the pattern some more. cut it up into four more bars, reconfigure where the bars go to keep it uh, in flow with the pattern that I'm looking for. And again, I did a uh, zero atmosphere uh, welding on the billet, welded all the seams all the way around. And again, we're gonna let the core uh, soak at the proper forge welding temperature, 2250, 2300 degrees, just thereabouts. Anything over 2200 is good. And let it soak and saturate all the way through the, to the core. So I, I'm getting ready to cut mosaic tile. So in order to prep it for that, I'm gonna put it here in, in the vermiculite uh, after it's up to maybe 16, 1700 degrees, 1600 and uh, let it slow down ultra slow in the vermiculite. That makes it about as soft as you can get it without annealing. And that's what the bar looks like on the end slice, the end cut. That's the pattern we want. So that's why we're going to mosaic this billet is to put that pattern on the other side of the billet just by laying those tile down and welding them together. This is one of those times when you want to get your billet pretty clean. Even the sides are pretty clean. Definitely the top and bottom. 
it may have decarb on it a little bit somewhere uh, minute probably not it's probably all it's all good steel but it all gets ground down very smooth and clean at this point because when you go to weld your mosaic tile together uh, you want everything going in your direction you want all the odds in your favor so you do a lot of prep work and clean up to make sure that your welds are nearly flawless you see that billet looks pretty clean right there and it's like that on all four sides the billet is large enough for probably another knife um, usually i make a, a big large enough billet to make uh, one or two knives out of because my knives haven't gotten as big as some of the kyle's have so i can i can do that so i just cut off slices that i need and when i want to come into the billet later for another build or maybe accessories uh, components off of that for guards or pommels or whatever I want to build out of it and then maybe another knife I got some billets sitting over there ready to go so I just cut me off a, a six slices here I think I got and I'm going to weld those together everything's marked and labeled and I'm going to clean them up again get everything very 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 flat I weld the sides up a hundred percent because it keeps uh it helps keep from tearing it's hard to think of steel that it could tear but in the right circumstances it uh it likes to tear when it's provoked Nice, good heat, very hot all the way to the core on that first initial weld. Very slow, nice, even, methodical pushes. I got the knife cleaned up and I got it shaped and I put it in the heat treat oven to be normalized. It went through a normalizing cycle, uh, 1600, 1500, 1400, with uh, maybe an hour or two in between to cool down properly, to relax the steel. Got my rough shape, the rough profile. Got a couple of scribe lines on there. I'm gonna just do a little bit of grinding on the blade edge, about halfway up the blade, is what I traditionally do, just to get rid of some of that uh, mild steel right off the get go and make my heat treat. I make the knife a little bit thinner for a good, really good heat treat. All right, she's up to 1525, and I'm gonna quench her in a Parks 50, which is heated up to about 110 degrees, and that will harden the steel. came out great. You can see the pattern through the mill scale from the heat treat process. I'll flatten out the knife on the surface grinder. Just It's just nice to have a nice flat foundation. Now the spine is straight for quite a ways. Unlike a lot of knives, you don't usually have your spine that straight that long, but this is an exception because of the, the uh, ribs that I'm gonna grind into the spine making it super flat across the spine is, is a bonus. I bought some end mill bits. I thought I'm some, I bought some cheap uh, carbide end mill bits. I thought I might mill this in on the mill. That didn't work. I broke several bits and I wasn't even the 20th of the way through this project. So I had to just totally set everything down, step back from it and rethink it. And I didn't want to do the Dremel because of the run out, but Kyle's Dremel has hardly any run out. It's a really nice tool. I think they're an inch and a quarter wheel, inch and a quarter stone on there with a certain thickness. And it's got a square edge on it also. It's not a radius edge, it's a square edge. So I had uh, three ribs I had to cut. So I used a fresh brand new stone for each slot for each side. So I used uh, three on one side and three brand new stones on the other side. And they barely got used, but my my ribs came out like they were milled. They, they looked identical. The rib barrel came out 
exceptionally clean. I was I was so excited about that. got it roughed in uh, I'm getting ready to performance test the knife uh, they all get chopped on kitchen cutlery hunters buoys everything gets performance tested brass rod uh, two by four knots Got my guard ready to be slid up on there now. Uh, I cut that. Uh, I cut that relief at the Ricasso end with a carbide mill. That is the brake release mechanism, which is the upper part of the guard. It's one piece. It's one independent piece from the rest of the knife. So it got stacked on there first. Okay, fitting the front guard was a nice way to start this build because it was fairly easy. Now I am getting ready to uh, fit the trigger guard. The trigger is one piece. It's, it's forged in the same piece. It, it splits off. I started with a piece of mild steel. I was just going to make a template and see how it worked out. And I didn't expect for it to actually go as well as it did this thing is forged i don't know over 90 percent to shape which is something i normally don't do but it was happening so i just went with it and i kept working it and kept working it and it came out really good I'm getting ready to split the trigger off of the trigger guard. I bought some, I think they're two aught or three aught jewelers uh, saw blades. I have a jeweler saw but I run bigger blades on it. But I thought, I want that to be like, like it just grew in there. So I got the one of the thinnest blades I thought I could handle. And I cut that out with that jeweler saw when I got down to the finished. I wanted a super tight uh, crevice in there. I want it almost look like it was just cracked off of it. Just a super tight, not even a radius. It's got a real mild radius, but it, it's only, I don't know, it's not over 10 thousandths for sure. It's less than that. It looks like it just was peeled right out of it. This is one of the most complicated pieces I've ever made for a knife in my life, in my entire three year career.
So I got it roughed in and I'm getting ready to do the spacer behind it. This is a piece of mild steel. It's pinned in also. You see the back, the tail end of that guard. Jerry guard is kind of thick, but I wanted to dome that and it also has to inlay into the handle. Doing the guard and getting it to set into the handle uh, took, it took two weeks. Cut, fit, cut, fit, cut, fit. The handle's roughed in, the guard is roughed in. Um, I've got to take the profile down a little bit on the handle, obviously, because that metal doesn't show up at all. But uh, you'll see it's all gonna work out. I left myself a little bit of room everywhere without too much, uh, too much room, you know, just didn't make it a half inch too big or, you know, an inch. I, I just left it just enough that that's what I needed. And remember this is, this trigger guard is, was supposed to be a test piece, but it flowed out so well that I went ahead and, and decided to assemble it onto the knife. I was so excited at this point. So now for me, once I got that trigger guard laid in, the rest of it is just building a knife, which I do every day. So the rest of it went really well. Uh, the pommel, pommel nut went really fast and the, the spacer and the, the pommel nut. That's just normal everyday knife making stuff. I think I was going to make this a pommel nut. I don't remember. Oh yeah, I was going to make out a pommel nut and I actually didn't do that. I ended up using a piece of a uh, mild steel and gun blued it. Can't remember why now. I ended up using a mild steel one like we do on a lot of the other boys. I don't know remember why, but maybe it was because of the way it was stacking out. Just the aesthetics of it, the looks of the copper alloy wasn't going to look proper. The hot gun bluing was going to look better on it. Yep, now we're just in the regular knife making mode here. Grinding on the handle. I'm working my way down slowly. I've got reference marks on there I'm sanding to. Trying to make it look symmetrical and smooth. Getting ready to do some relief work on the handle to uh, replicate the uh, the handle on the Browning B25 2B. Browning B25 B2. Browning B25 B2. There's a lot of material to be moved, but I just want to outline it with some uh, delicate files to get a nice soft start once I get my... Uh, outlines done i can get a little more aggressive with it just so i can ease my way into it and get get a feel for it because this kind of relief work i'm i don't do all the time on knives so uh when i do it i've got to just kind of ease into it and uh settle into it and let it reveal let it reveal itself as i as i work into my layout lines
doing a border around where the stippling's going to be. I opted out not to do the checkering, so I uh, I did a border, and I'm going along with a rotary tool and stipple it with a rotary tool. I think I spent probably three days. I know it was a two full days just on the stippling. I'd go back around on my border and gently refreshing it once I got started. And you got to be really careful not to make it look uh, too uniform. It's got to look random all the way through from where you start to where you finish. And there's some really soft spots. This is all stabilized wood, but there's still some uh, soft spots in it. And the rotary tool just wanted to drop down and I had to be real careful to float over those spots. I, I started recognizing them right away um, just by color where they were. And some of the hard spots were, were really hard. I actually had to go back over and re-stipple some of them. KnifeMaker Plus enrollment has been closed for four months and we just opened it back up. So if you wanna learn how to make a drop point ladder pattern Damascus hunting knife, then you're in luck. What I'll be teaching you with during this hunting knife build is everything from start to finish. We're gonna start out by making a clean and elegant ladder pattern Damascus blade. Once that's done, we'll move on to fitting a guard, getting that perfect, nice, tight fit between the guard and the blade and then the wood handle. I'll be taking this base hunter model and adding some nice upgrades. One of the upgrades is the ladder pattern Damascus, but on the guard, we're gonna add some beautiful damascene. Damascene is where you do gold wire overlay on the outside of the metal. This is a brand new technique to me that I've been practicing for many days and I can't wait to share it with you. I think it's gonna be beautiful on this knife. And to finish it all off on the handle, we're gonna add some texturing that'll add a nice look and some extra grip for your hand too. At base, this is gonna be your basic drop point hunting knife, but with those upgrades we're adding, you can still use it out in the field, but it'll also be a beautiful piece that a collector might like to have in its collection. One of my biggest hopes through this Knife Maker Plus project is that you'll be able to learn the skills and techniques you need to level up your knife making. So join me on this Knife Maker Plus project and over the next couple of months, I'll show you everything from the start of the build all the way to the final sharpening and assembly of this hunting knife. Enrollment is closing soon for this project. Don't miss out on it. The link is in the description. I'll get this guard down to probably about a, probably a 320 or 600 grit flat. Then I'll start doming it. Once I get the profile exactly where I want it, then I'll actually go back in with a file and a coarse uh, sandpaper, scuff it all up again. But at least I had, I had my profile exactly where I want it. It won't get touched right in the center because everything's domed on the trigger guard in both directions, except for the trigger. It's just domed in one direction. I got a scribe line on that where it sets into the wood. So I'm getting ready to put a, a dome on the uh, trigger guard where it sets in. There's no less than two weeks just on the trigger guard between the forging and finish work, shaping. It's, it's a good, easy two weeks. There's a scribe line on the side. You can't see it but I'm taking it to a scribe line. There's, I didn't grind or file on anything without uh, having a scribe line until I got to my finish uh, grits. You see that dome starting to take shape. This is a safety file. There's a safe edge on one side of it, and what that does is it makes it ultra sharp. Uh, so you get a really tight, um, V notch. It's almost to nothing. It's it's got to be just at one thousandths or two thousandths at the most on the safety edge. So when you look at it with the naked eye, it's it looks like it just grew right out of it.
came up with a pattern on a test piece. I don't think I showed it here, but um, I liked the pattern that I had on my test piece. So then I did a layout on my, my actual piece. You see all the layout lines on there. This is my custom copper alloy that I make. This came from a uh, range brass, spent range brass and uh, copper, about a six to one ratio, six copper and one brass. I kept mixing it till I got a bronze look. And it's pretty easy to cast it. We got some equipment and it's, it's, uh, it's not difficult to make it. It's kind of difficult to find silicon bronze. It's kind of expensive and we had a bunch of copper and brass laying around. So it makes a really cool story also using the uh, range brass to build a, uh, a knife that's uh, designed off of a shotgun. Just kind of poetic justice. I'm putting these, it's a doming graving tool. I cut a groove so they were down, they were relieved down in, and I domed them and distressed it with some, uh, what I use, brass black, and then a sunshine cloth over it gently to expose some of the. come out with a reveal the finished reveal the blade is done if you get a chance to look you see that the clip where it ends right there at the spine of the knife is the same distance from that uh the, the ribbed notch to the uh, uh, sharpened clip as it is from the last notch in the ribbing to the guard. It's uh, symmetrically laid out and that was uh, pretty important here on making this look nice and clean. Cleaning up my parts, getting ready to hot gun blue them in Branell hot gun bling salts. A lot of prep work, it was raining that day. I have a master bladesmith, Kyle's holding the umbrella for me. <laughs> I put these in the bluing salts. These were polished before they were put in. I thought the distressed copper alloy would uh, go really well with the, the wood handle. And it, there is so much clean, beautiful, bright, uh, hot gun bluing on here. I thought that the uh, patina would help uh, offset that a little bit. And it sure did. I'll definitely uh, consider that again. The handle has 
a very, very mild radius on it where the tray guard fits into it because if it's a tight, sharp edge, the wood can chip. If it's disassembled or during assembly and disassembly, or even if I have to service it later as a possibility it could break, they chip the edge. So museum fit handle, it's got great balance and it feels really good in the hand. It was a fun build and uh, I'm very blessed to be able to build something like this for a client. When my customer saw the knife, he was just simply overwhelmed with all the detail on it. And his dad just was very excited to have it and was nearly speechless when his son presented it to him for his birthday. It doesn't get any better than that. That's good stuff. Thanks for watching. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye. Learn how to make this hunting knife from start to finish only on Knife Maker Plus.